This is the Youth Bible with Nikki and Pippa Gumbel, day 142. No matter what is going on in our lives, it's important to take time to celebrate. We can celebrate the big things and we can celebrate the small things. When we take time to celebrate, we're reminded that God is good and that he has blessed us. We're also reminded to be thankful for all that we have, even when things are tough. So today, let's find out why we should take time to celebrate and also what we should be celebrating. A glimpse of heaven is how one 27-year-old woman described her experience of our annual church holiday, Focus. She also spoke about the year she missed it in order to go on an exotic holiday. Each day, she could only think about how she longed to be at Focus. But Focus is a time when the whole community comes together in a festival of celebration, worship, thanksgiving and praise. We often experience a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's a time of spiritual growth when we listen to visionary and practical teaching from the Bible on how to live our lives. It's a time of laughter and fun as we meet together for a week-long party, playing, picnicking, singing and dancing. We make new friends as well as having a great holiday. It really is a glimpse of heaven. It takes time, but celebration is an important part of life. From Psalm 66 Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for humankind. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. Celebrate God's goodness. Do you sometimes feel like you've been to hell and back? Have you found yourself pushed to the limit? It may be that God is training you, like silver, refined in the fire. God had brought his people through very difficult times. He trained us first, passed us like silver, through refining fires, pushed us to our very limit, road-tested us inside and out, took us to hell and back. Finally, he brought us to this well-watered place. Don't let these occasions go unmarked. Celebrate. Their celebration sounds a fairly noisy affair. All together now, applause for God. They sang praise. How awesome are your deeds. So great is your power. They celebrated what God had done. They rejoiced and praised God in a way that everyone around could hear. Bless our God, O peoples. Give him a thunderous welcome. Lord, I celebrate your goodness. Thank you that you bring me through fire and water in order to bring me to a place of abundance. New Testament from John 12 and 13 Then Jesus cried out, Whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. The one who looks at me is seeing the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel round his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin, and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped round him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. 
Celebrate Jesus. There will be times in your life when things go well. There may also be times when things go badly. But there's one thing you can always celebrate. Jesus died and rose again for you. Jesus said, For I did not come to judge the world, but to save it. He said, I have come so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. The context of Jesus washing his disciples' feet is set just before the Passover feast. There would have been great excitement in the air as hundreds of thousands came to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. This time of celebration foreshadowed the death and resurrection of Jesus, which we now celebrate especially at Easter. When he finished washing their feet, he said to them, Do you understand what I've done for you? What was it all about? What were they to understand? We can see four pictures from the passage. First, love. The act of Jesus washing his disciples' feet demonstrated the full extent of his love. This is a very striking contrast to what the world thinks of when people use the word love. It is far more than a feeling or an emotion. It's a decision to treat people the way that Jesus would treat them. Second, service. The roads of Palestine were unsurfaced and uncleaned. In dry weather, they would have been inches deep in dust. In wet weather, they would have been liquid mud. In a wealthy household, on arrival, there would have been a bowl at the door. The second lowest slave of the household would untie the sandals. The lower slave would wash the feet. While the others are reclining, Jesus gets up, takes off his sleeveless tunic, strips down to a loincloth. Like a slave, he starts washing their feet. Jesus is taking the place of the person at the bottom of society, the last place, the place of a slave, the one who does the dirty jobs. This is a total reversal of the world's model of leadership. Jesus, their Lord and teacher, reveals himself as the least one in society, the one who does the dirty jobs, the one who is in the last place. Jesus shows us that if you love people, you will be willing to serve them and that those who serve you should always be treated with the greatest respect. Third, humility. Jesus uniquely combined absolute love and absolute power. The Father has put all things under his power. In love, he chose to act in humility and serve his disciples. Those who seek their own glory, like Judas, are reduced to nothing. Those who exalt themselves are humbled. Those who humble themselves, God will exalt. Jesus reveals a new way of exercising authority through love, service and humility. In this dramatic way, he bridges the gap between those in leadership and those under their leadership. Fourth, forgiveness. The washing and cleansing is a sign of forgiveness, cleansing from sin. Foot washing is a picture of what Jesus is about to do on the cross for them. Through Jesus' death for you, you are totally forgiven. Why then does Jesus teach us to pray regularly for forgiveness? I find the most helpful analogy and picture is the one given here. When Jesus moved to wash Peter's feet, Peter said, No, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Peter replied, In effect, well, in that case, wash my whole body. Jesus said, Those who've had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. This is a picture of forgiveness. When you put your faith in Jesus, you are made totally clean and you are forgiven. Everything is dealt with. You do not need to repeat this one-off act of repentance and faith that leads to total forgiveness. It's the equivalent of having a bath. However, as we go through the world, we do things that tarnish our friendship with God. Your relationship is always secure, but your friendship is sullied with the dirt that you pick up on your feet. Each day pray, Lord, forgive me, cleanse me from the dirt. You don't need to have a bath again. Jesus has done that for you, but a measure of cleansing may be necessary each day. In addition to our great Easter celebration each week, when we gather on the day of the Resurrection Sunday, we remember and celebrate these amazing events. Furthermore, every time you receive communion, you are celebrating the death and resurrection of Jesus for you. Lord, help us to follow Jesus' example, not just in words, but also in actions. Thank you that you have given us so much to celebrate. Old Testament from 1 Samuel 10 to 12. The people then said to Samuel, 
Who was it that asked, Shall Saul reign over us? Turn these men over to us, so that we may put them to death. But Saul said, No one will be put to death today. For this day the Lord has rescued Israel. Then Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal, and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal, and made Saul king in the presence of the Lord. There they sacrificed fellowship offerings before the Lord, and Saul and all the Israelites held a great celebration. Samuel said to all Israel, I have listened to everything you said to me, and have set a king over you. Now you have a king as your leader. As for me, I am old and grey, and my sons are here with you. I have been your leader from my youth until this day. Do not be afraid. For the sake of his great name, the Lord will not reject his people, because the Lord is pleased to make you his own. As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you, and I will teach you the way that is good and right. But be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he has done for you. Celebrate Success Saul began his reign as king with a honeymoon period. The Spirit of God came upon him in power and he prophesied. God gave him great wisdom in dealing with opposition. He knew when to keep silent. Saul soon had to deal with troublemakers. God is in the business of touching human hearts, but as always, the Bible is realistic. Troublemakers were around the corner. Wherever God is at work in power, expect to find troublemakers as well. When the people of God were facing appalling cruelty from a man who wanted to gouge out the right eye of every person, the Spirit of God came upon Saul in power. God gave him a great victory, and he had the wisdom to say afterwards, No one shall be put to death today. For this day the Lord has rescued Israel. Instead they held a great celebration. In Samuel's farewell speech, he spoke of how often God had given success to his people when they cried out for help. He urged them to consider what great things he has done for you. Many of these things came about as a result of Samuel's prayer. And he said, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. Don't get so bound up with your own needs and worries that you fail to pray for others. It's very important that we pray for one another. The passage for today ends with Samuel telling the people to consider what great things he's done for you. Whatever else is going on in your life, look back, consider and celebrate your forgiveness, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promise of glory and all the other great things God has done for you. Lord, today I want to look back with thanks and celebrate all the great things you have done for me. Pepper adds. In 1 Samuel chapter 11 verse 6 it says When Saul heard their words the spirit of God came upon him in power and he burned with anger I don't often think of the spirit of God coming on somebody and bringing anger I normally think of the spirit of God setting people free from anger bringing joy and peace and deep conviction but anger against injustice moves us from apathy to action Let's pray Lord, thank you for everything that you give me. Thank you for the big things and the small things. I celebrate you today. And I'm so thankful that you have chosen to come into my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit today to be joyful in your presence. I pray these things in your mighty name. Amen.